How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech and also to a nice little build video. Now it's been some time since I last had done a build so I'm really excited to get back into doing one and I've got an interesting build here. Now I will say that some of the parts aren't going to make complete sense. It's not a perfect build here unfortunately mostly because I'm using some of the parts that I personally had on hand and then some of the parts that was available from the brands and uh, there's only so much that they actually could supply as well that I had. So some of the stuff doesn't really make too much sense. For example, I'm using a overclockable CPU, but we don't have an overclockable board. But I am gonna go over all of my thoughts and then also some changes that I could possibly make or you could possibly make if you want to do a similar build. Now how this is going to work is I'm going to do the build, go over all of the parts individually while installing them. And then afterwards, I'm just going to give my idea of how easy it was to actually build the system inside the case, the coolers and so on. And then lastly, we're going to do some benchmarks to see actually how the system performs with a game, some productivity benchmarks. We're gonna do the SSDs, we're gonna do GPU, CPU, all of that, and see how the entire system performs. And then lastly, before we jump into the build, if you want to get any of these parts for yourself or some of the recommendations that I'm going to add as well, I will leave a link in the video description that'll take you to my website, and you'll be able to get all of the two buy links down there because it's not gonna fit in the description below. But anyway, with all of that said, let's start off with the build. All right, so starting off with our motherboard first. So this is the ASUS ROG Strix B660F gaming Wi-Fi board. Now, can we can open it up so long, but the reason that I went with this board is because it is a very top of the range B660 board. And also I do feel that it is better to go for a B660 board currently than a Z690, especially if you're not going to do any crazy overclocking or stuff like that. Now as for pricing, the board is relatively expensive. It is an ROG board, so so it is retailing for around two hundred and fifty dollars or five thousand three hundred rand for euros of Africa. Now that does sound quite expensive, but actually, if you take a look at this board compared to its Z690 equivalent, it is pretty much half the price, or almost half the price. So you are getting plenty of the new features, but at a much reduced price point. And again, the reason why I said I would honestly rather go for this B660 board instead of a Z690 equivalent. But of course, there are other B660 boards that you can also go for from ASUS, so if check those out if you want to. But in short, the B660F here has a nice array of I.O. here on the side. Now, just like the Z690 boards, some of the B660 boards, like the F here, does come with a DDR5 memory and then also a PCI Express of 5 as well for future proofing. Now, you do get two full-size slots, one running at full 16x speeds, the other one running at 4x speed, PCI Express a 3, and then two 1x speeds. And then also for storage, you do have three M.2s, two of them being a PCI Express of 4 and then one of them being PCI Express a three. As for your BRMs, it's also pretty good. It's a 16 plus one phase power delivery system. And that's plenty, even if you want to go for a higher end of CPU as well. And then next up, let's get into the CPU. And unfortunately, this is a part that I don't think will fit perfectly, but unfortunately it's the only one that I have. So this is the 12700K. Now again, you can't overclock with the B660 aboard, so you're not going to get that extra performance that you would get if you were able to overclock, but you are getting around 100 to 200 megahertz more from the K version compared to the non-K version. Now I do feel that for this build, something like the i5 12600 or even the 12600K would have been a bit of a better fit for the price range but again unfortunately this is the only one that i have so we're gonna stay with this one and as you guys can see it is a confidential cpu so it is a 12700k now as for pricing the 12700k here is a retailing for around 375 dollars or 8300 rand for here in south africa now I wasn't able to find a stock of the 12700, uh, the 12700 normal one uh, for in the US on Amazon or Newegg US, but I was able to find it for here in South Africa where it retails for around 6,800 Rand. So it's around what 20% cheaper compared to the K version. 
Now, the nice thing about the IS-7, which I personally do prefer and what I think would be work really nice for this build, is uh, that you do have that at 20 cores, which is a plenty of performance. Either for gaming, it's going to be plenty for that if you want to future-proof, but also for productivity. I personally use a 12700K in uh, my personal system, and it's honestly just a rocket when editing videos. So if you want to stream as a well, stream for off your CPU, do all the encoding, it's going to work for that as well. And then next up for our memory, we have the XPG Alonso DDR5 memory. Now, this is a 16 gig single DIMM, unfortunately, but it does run at 5,200 megahertz, which is still uh, crazy. Now, unfortunately, I only have a single DIMM here. I would have liked to have a bit more, but this is unfortunately the only ones that I see South Africa had at the moment for me. So we're going to just keep it at that. There is going to be a drop in performance uh, quite a bit, especially in certain games, but later on, you can increase it to use a dual channel with two DIMMs. But also for pricing, this one is currently retailing for around $170 or 2,800 Rand, or roughly double that if you want to go for the 32 gig kit with two 16 gig modules. Honestly, I would rather say go for that instead. But now as you guys can see, you get a nice full black heat spreader here, and does look pretty clean. Now, like I mentioned before, unfortunately, we are going to lose some performance when using only a single module here, but you can go for a full dual channel system instead of just only a single module and you're going to get plenty more performance out of that but this is currently all i have unfortunately because the prices are so high and then also this availability is also pretty limited still so you'll have to see what you can actually get. Sometimes you can actually get them in a nice little bundle where you can, on new especially, where you can get the RAM, including an SSD for a pretty good deal. So that might be an option if you want to rather go for that and save some cash there as well. And speaking about storage, we're gonna pair the system up with the Transcend MTE 220S, one terabyte PCI Express 3 M.2 SSD. Now, the reason that I went with this one instead of a PCI Express 4 because the board again it does support PCI Express 4 is that it is slightly cheaper and you're still going to get a plenty of performance out of the SSD here. It's actually one of the fastest PCI Express 3 SSDs that I have tested till date. So if you want to see how it actually performs, I did make a separate video on it, a full review. So you can check that out and also how you compare it to some of the newer SSDs as well. But again, reason why I went with this one because it's a false and it's also quite affordable. And it's also one of the only ones that I currently am not using in a different system. So that's also a reason. Now, of course, this is just the SSD that I currently have on hand. But if you want to pair it up with something else, you can, of course. You can also get the Samsung 970 Evo Plus, one terabyte of around $130 or 2,250 Rand for the of Africa. And it's still a PCI Express 3 SSD, but you're gonna get similar speeds out of that. So you do have the options of different SSDs, or if you wanted to, you can pair it up with a PCI Express 4, of course. Link in the description will be for my playlist of all of the SSDs that I have at tested till date. So there's a plenty of PCI Express 4 SSDs that you can also check out and see how fast they are and how they compare to the Transcend here. One thing that I really love about the ASUS board here is that you get your Q-latch design for your M.2s here where you can just quickly slide it out of the way and also just press it down, slide it back, and it locks the M.2 in place. No need for additional screws or anything like that. It's really handy, especially if your motherboard is already inside a system and you need to fiddle in there. It's actually really handy. All right, then next up for the case, we have the Cougar Dark Blader X5. Now you do actually get these in a few different options. You get the black version that we have here, but then also the white version, which we also have, which possibly going to do a build later on. And then also the RGB version, which just comes with uh, RGB fans here in the front. This one does not. And then also, I believe it comes with a fan hub included also. Now we can quickly go over the case first. So currently it is retailing this model, the non-RGB one, is retailing for $60 or 1,300 Rand for here in South Africa. Now the uh, RGB version is a bit more expensive going for $90 or I don't have a price for here in South Africa, unfortunately. Now, as you guys saw, it does come with a tempered glass side uh, panel and for the price point, the bolt quality isn't too bad. There's not too much of flex 
really, and I'm pretty happy for the price point. Now for the front panel over here, it is mostly solid, except for these groove, air grooves here on the side, and then also here at the bottom. It gets slightly here on the side as well, but it's very, very thin there, so not too much air will uh, get in through that. Now as for the front panel, it is more solid except for the side air grooves here, which will allow some air to pass through. You'd have some air ventilation here at the bottom and then a slightly groove here in the front as well, but not too, too much. This side is slightly transparent. So if you do have RGB fans, then you will be able to see some of the glow there. But for this build, we're not gonna add any RGB, unfortunately, or not too much really. For on the inside here, you have your option for your vertical GPU amount, which is pretty handy. For cooling, you do have the option of just a single 120 millimeter here at the back, but then a triple rad here at the top and then also in the, the front there. Now quickly for the back here, you do have your two 2.5 millimeter SSD trays there and then also your 3.5 millimeter down here as well, which I believe you can remove with our screws at the bottom here. At the bottom, you do also get a dust filter there, you get a dust filter here in the front, and then also one at the top. And quickly for our power supply, we're going to use the Cooler Motor MWE 750 Bronze V2. So this is, like the name implies, a 750 watt non-modular power supply. And also, it does have a five-year warranty. It's a bronze rated, again, like the name implies. It's not too expensive. It's going for $110 or 1,300 rand. Now, of course, you can go for a higher rated power supply and also fully modular, but this is one of the more affordable ones that I had uh, available at the studio here. So I went with this one instead because it's going to supply plenty of enough power, even if you wanted to upgrade in the future. And also you don't need to go full modular. You can still use and hide all of the cables here. So we can quickly install the power supply and then we can move on towards our motherboard and so on then afterwards. And then next up, we can install our motherboard. It's pretty simple. This case does support up to EATX boards, which is pretty handy. So if you have larger boards, then it's still going to fit. Or even if you have smaller boards, it'll fit as well. The integrated IO cover is pretty handy as well. So <laughs> no forgetting to actually install the IO cover. All right, then next up, let's get into the cooler, which is the Corsair H100i Elite LCD. Now I get the normal Elite, which has like full RGB in the, uh, in the header there, but this is now with a display on which you can put on graphs, videos, images, and so on, add or show information about the system as well. Now it is currently a bit overkill <laughs> because the cooler is currently retailing for around $260 or 5,100 Rand, which is, it's quite expensive. But the reason why I'm using it is because it's only one of two um, coolers that I own that actually support LGA 1700 sockets. So we're going to <laughs> use it, but you can obviously go for a bit of a cheaper cooler. Now you can still go for Corsair. They do still have the normal Elite coolers as well, which is still a bit pricey, but it is a lot more affordable than this one. And you do actually have the option of actually converting the other Elite later on to have the display as well. Or even if you currently own the one of the Elites, you do have the option of a buying just the upgrade kits and you can have the display on as well. So we're going, I'm going to show you guys how it looks and everything, but it's a pretty nice. Now with the cooler, you do get a controller box here as a well, kind of looks like a Commander Pro style where you have your six fans here and then also your RGB connectors there. So if you have up to six Corsair RGB fans, you can connect all of those up together as a well. And then here is all of the brackets to mount the cooler. So this is your TR4 for Threadripper, your AM4 for AMD Ryzen, and then your Intel ones here, which I believe will also work on the new LGA 1700 sockets. 
Now also, you do have the option of buying a bracket separately if you want to convert some of your older coolers to the new LGA 1700 socket where you don't need to buy an entirely new cooler. You can just upgrade some of the coolers and that's going to depend up to the brand what they actually implemented. Corsair has some, a cool mosh have some as well, I believe, and so on. This is also the first time that I'm actually seeing, it's very nice, a USB uh, front header actually splitter. So you get a two for just a one because sometimes you usually only get a two on your board and because so many devices actually use them, that's going to take up space. So luckily that's not a problem because right there, both of them actually do use USB. All right, so let's quickly get our bracket out. We're going to have to use this one, which says LGA 1700. Now for the cooling, you can either install the cooler in the front if you wanted to, because there's definitely enough space, or you can mount it here at the top, because it does look like there's going to be enough space between the VRM heat spreader, the uh, RAM, and then also the fans with that. So we're going to just see if it doesn't fit, then we're going to mount it at the front, but otherwise we're going to mount it at the top with the fans blowing outwards. And then also we're going to mount the fans, not at the top, but at the bottom of the IIO. Uh, and again, it does look like there should be enough space. All right, so we got all of the fans and everything installed. The dust filter still fits at the top over the screws. Now we need to quickly uh, connect the AIO towards our, on our motherboard. Um, so because you have the LCD display now, that's actually going to give you a nice thick cable there that you need to hide. So make sure that you have enough space depending on which way you want to route it. If you route it to the bottom, then of course you're going to need to hide it nicely. So I'm going to mount them with them going over the VRM heat spur towards the back here. All right, there we go. Now I can remove the cover there. And of course you can, if you want to, you can reapply thermal paste, but we're just going to leave it like the, like that. I'll read that cable through later. Oh, damn. All right, so I should probably have figured this out because you can get the upgrade kit separately, but the entire display here, of course, comes loose. So it just makes it a lot easier to actually install. <laughs> so that should have been self-explanatory right there, but that's fine. Now we can just mount our cooler here. There we go. And now we can just pop this one back. And then there we go, all set. All right, so in the meantime, I actually connected some of the USBs here and everything, just routed some of the cables through, seeing how I'm going to mount everything and connect everything. And also the Commander Pro. It's not the Commander Pro, but it's something like that. I was thinking of doing this, but I'm going to add three additional fans towards the front of the case, just to add an extra bit of airflow. Now, these are some of the Corsair fans that I usually get with some of the AIOs, but honestly you can use any fan really. I just want to push, uh, pull in a bit more air from uh, the front into the case. So there's going to be enough cool air to actually vent out the cool air as well, push it through the AIO at yeah, the top. So I'm going to quickly install uh, these three at the front, and then we're going to sort out all of the cables. Luckily, because I have the Commodore Pro here, all of the fans can connect directly to that one, and it's going to keep it a nice and, well, neat-ish. Unfortunately, there are additional cables now that I need to route and manage and everything. But luckily, at the back here, it doesn't look too bad. <laughs> Not too, too bad. So there's still enough space here at the bottom to actually install and hide everything neatly. All right, so there we go, we've got all of that installed. Now we can really take a look at the Fan Hub Commander Pro here. So I already routed through the USB splitter here. So all we need to do now is actually connect our pumps USB here. 
Now, unfortunately, this does cause a lot of additional cables. And then also now we're going to have to use additional SATA uh, connector. So or for a SATA connector, just because we need to power the device. So that's unfortunate, but uh, we can just luckily pop off it. There's enough space in here, which we can just pop it in there and space should be fine. Now, unfortunately also because some of the cables aren't long enough. So we are going to connect some of the fans rather on the motherboard instead of uh, on the fan hub. All right, now one problem that I ran into quickly is that because the cable is so short for the top front fan here, and there's no additional ports really on the board closer by, and this one's also not gonna dangle around here. I am going to have to see where else I can actually mount the fan, pull it back, and then uh, sometimes I feel that some of the boards aren't designed necessarily that well for like everything. So for example, the B660F board here doesn't have any fan connectors, PWM headers, uh, on the right side of the board. Everything's at the top, at the CPU, or at the bottom. So it's a bit difficult to mount a fan with a really short cable. Um, so I'm going to have to see where I'm actually going to mount this now. All right, cool. So I pretty much got everything set up here at the back. It's not the cleanest so far, but I'll see once I actually have the GPU installed. I will clean it up a bit more, but luckily nobody's going to see that. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. But inside, it looks pretty clean. All right, and then for our final piece, we have our GPU, which is the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3050 OC. Now, I know it's not the perfect fit for the rest of the hardware. We have an i7-12700K and our cooler is quite expensive and everything. But my idea was that because the availability and prices are so crazy, rather buy a more a budget GPU now so that you can play uh, games. And then uh, later on, once GPU prices have become more reasonable, then you can actually sell the 3050 and buy then let's say a 3070 Ti Strix or something like that. But for the meantime, you can actually play some games and then you don't need to worry about your CPU or anything else really. Luckily, everything here you can be able to use for quite a long time. Power supply, your uh, RAM, your 5, you'll be able to use that for a long time. And also the cooler and the case and so on. So I don't think that's going to have to be a problem. It's just the GPU. So that's why I went with this one. And then also I actually just want to do a build with a 3050. So that's also a reasoning. Now as for prices, Currently, when I looked, there's no availability of these tricks here in South Africa. There's no stock at all. There is some cheaper cards, but no Strix cards. And then also for in the US, they're ranging between 600 to over a thousand dollars. So yeah, wait for prices to come down because MSRP wise, this card should be closer to around $300 instead, but scalpers and everything, it's just an issue. Now, if you want to see a bit more detail about the card, I have already done an unboxing of it, but it's a pretty a nice looking card. It's a bit overkill, I would say, for a 3050, a budget card, but I mean, this is definitely gonna turn some heads and people are gonna think you're definitely a bowler. Well, for the price you're probably going to pay, you, you kind of need to be a bowler. All right, so now let's pop in this bad boy. And then we can get into some uh, benchmarks and some game plan and everything. All right, so something really annoying that I found on the dark blader here is that, there we go. If you want to, you need to take the entire vertical brack out to actually get able to install your GPU, which is a bit annoying. Uh, because otherwise there's no space there, but I mean, anyway, okay. Now we can finally install our GPU. Our GPU. And there we go.
All right, so just before we jump into the benchmarks and everything, I quickly want to go over the cooler because it's pretty damn cool, the H100i Elite LCD. Again, you can buy the LCD unit on its own if you have an Elite cooler before, but uh, we can quickly go into the Corsair IQ software and just check it out. Now, of course, you have all of your standard of, uh, controls. You have your RGB lighting and then so on. You can control the RGB around the ring. Uh, you have your fans that you can adjust again. And of course, you can use any Corsair fans. But then you get into, of course, the standard effects that you can apply here. Nothing too crazy, really, again, standard. But then you get into the screen type. So this is pretty cool. So you got your, so you get your concentric, which just like rolls in and out. We're gonna go over all the sensors and the, the display and everything more. You have your single bar, which is pretty cool. It looks like a ref counter there. You have your fade full. You have your monitor there, you have your GIF and image, which we'll get into. You have your aperture, which kind of twirls in and out. The dynamic bar, which is also going to like a ref meter or a speedometer. You have your pattern full. So all of this is depending on how uh, high your temperature is or your usage or so on, then it's going to fill up and give you better. So this is pretty cool where you have your temperatures on both sides, you have it on the, you you can either select it on the CPU load or you can select it on the CPU temperature. Then it's gonna give you the, the max temperature on the one side and the usage and percentage on the other side. Actually, I like that one. You have your blank, of course. You have your turbo, <laughs> which just scrolls like that. And you have your clock as well. So it is not currently 1 a.m. here. <laughs> but then we get into the screen and this is where it gets really, really cool. So you have your default screen which is gonna leave it like that, but then you can adjust your own image or your own GIF. So how it works is you can add your own one or you can select one of theirs, and then you can zoom in and out here, get the perfect in the center, and it's gonna look like that then. But of course, image is kind of boring. You wanna go for a GIF. So this is pretty much the standard one it looks like that you get with it. Zoom it in and it's gonna lightning and everything around it. But then I quickly just downloaded a few other ones, uh, other GIFs. And of course you can add any one you want, but this is just some of the ones that I added. Then you zoom in where you want, position it where you'd like, and then there you go. So how cool is that? Um, also for, let's say this one. So this one's unfortunately a bit out of position. Zoom in a bit more. So something like that. Now it does cut off a bit at the top and better at the bottom, but that's fine. I'll actually like that quite a bit as well. <laughs> the spaceman floating through space there. Uh, and then of course, here's another one. So all of these are space ones that I quickly downloaded, but you can download pretty much any one you want and add them. So there you go. I, I really, really like that. And then of course, for cooling, you do have all of your controls. Again, if you do use the, the fan hub and all of that, where you can adjust the pump speed, you can adjust all of the fan speed and everything. So currently it's mostly on quiet or balanced. So it's not going to be too, too loud, but I hear that it's, I can hear some of it though. But for me, honestly, it's fine. You can adjust it if you want to, but lower. All right, so now let's quickly get into our benchmark. So we're going to do some CPU benchmarks first to see how it performs and also temperatures, how hot it gets. Now, currently it is really hot here in the garage where I am. I'm currently sweating already. I believe the temperature here is around like 31-ish inside the garage. So it's really, really high. Most people won't necessarily be that high. Uh, but so currently our temperatures is a around like 40 ish degrees there so it's currently also still on a quiet mode so i quickly just bumped it up to balance now here as well so that'll just increase the, the fan speeds a bit so we can lower our temperatures but again it's really hot in here so we're going to start off with our first benchmark which is going to be some blender and we're going to do the classroom benchmark just to see how long it takes all right so we're a bit over halfway and so far we are running at 4.7 gigahertz on all cores or on all of the performance cores and then 3.6 on the efficient cores, the four efficients. And temperature wise, we're ranging around 80 to around 90. It does a spike at the highest we've reached so far as 93. So it did spike quite high and then power is around like 200 watts, which is also pretty high. But again, we are running at a max. Um, and it's doing uh, quite well, I believe. Now, again, temperature is a bit higher than normal because of just how damn hot it is inside here. 
So depending on your ambient temperature, you can probably drop it by like 10 to 15 degrees. All right, so we are done and finished in a time of four minutes and nine seconds. So not bad there. But now, of course, temperatures were quite high. It was around the lower 90s, 85 to around like 90. So it was a bit high, but of course, the case does play an impact. And then also the biggest part, I would say, is the garage just really, really hot. I mean, you guys can see I'm already sweating like crazy just because all of the lights and also the garage. So we're going to leave it at that. All right. And then next up quickly, a crystal disc mark tested to see how the SSD performs. That is around like 60% already full from the one terabyte because all of the games and everything. So that will impact performance is slightly. All right. So we scored a bit lower than what I thought in the writes, only 2,300 megabytes a second there, but everything else looked okay. So again, it's a decent like entry level one terabyte piece of press at three SSDs. All right. And then next up, we're quickly doing Time Spy. It's not the best benchmark necessarily, but it's a nice utility just to compare system to system kind of um, and get an idea roughly. You can test it at home, see your scores and kind of compare it towards this system and just kind of see what it is. All right, so we're done and we got a score of 6,425 points, graphic score of 5,841 and a CPU score of 14,854. Now, of course, the CPU is a bit overpowered <laughs> compared to the GPU, but you can upgrade later on if you want to. All right, so our first game we're gonna try out is some Rainbow Six Siege. And currently everything is set on Ultra, except I didn't know this actually, you now get DLSS, which is pretty cool. So we're already getting, I shouldn't have done that. We're already getting around like a 200-ish frames here. Probably gonna drop down a bit now. Let's just stay here for a bit. 160-ish. So let's quickly go to our DLSS. Enable that. So auto quality balance performance and ultra performance. We're gonna quickly put on ballot. So again, 160-ish there. 200, <laughs> not a bad. So around a 25% increase. Now this is 1080p, so nothing too too crazy. But if you want to play on like 4K even, I think that could could be possible. 1440p even. The nice thing about C is that it's a lot more. CPU intensive, so this is where the 11 nanometer, the 12 uh, 12700 12, k actually comes in in handy quite a bit. Now I'm not the best at this game, so bear with me. But it's hugely fun to try, and then also lose, of course. Ooh. I don't know the map at all. <laughs> no <worry>. uh... <laughs> I'm definitely gonna die, but we're doing quite well. So GPU is running a hundred percent. So CPU actually not running too high, 60 watts, 4.8 gigahertz, 4.7 temperature is also pretty good. GPU full two uh, two gigabits, a, uh, full 2,000 megahertz a second. RAM only four gigs, so not bad again. Uh, looks like they're probably inside here. So we're gonna here this area first. Damn it. It's a bit unnecessary. Unnecessary damage there. Got you. Why? I'm gonna die now. Ah, oh, no! 
eliminated oh. all friendlies. My damn arm. Alright, but we did it. We did it well. I didn't see it like that. But anyway, so we got an average uh, score of... So we got an average frame rate of around 211 frames. Not bad at all. Uh, lows were a bit lower, 93. Well, some, uh, some drops there, but honestly, not bad. And if you want to play it just for Siege, you can easily do that. If you want to play on a 1440p, it's going to be able to handle that as well, I believe. Usually it's going to drop around like 30, 30 to 50% depending on how high you go with the resolution, but luckily with a DLSS, you can add that up and it's going to increase your performance uh, quite a bit. All right, so for our next game, we're gonna play some Call of Duty uh, Warzone Season 2, which I've never really played before. I tried like one match before this and I really sucked and kind of died instantly. So we'll see how this kind of goes. Not expecting too much. I only actually played this game when it was when it came, first came out, so it's been a really long time. But so far, uh, quality-wise, everything's on a more of a medium setting. The LSS is set on ultra performance, just because when we get all the performance out, but everything else is more on the medium side. And again, 1080p, and we are getting around like uh, 100 frames here. I have no idea how this works. I haven't again played it like maybe like once before, like now, just before this match, and like before that, in the beginning, way, way back, so, and... Hostile dropping into the area. Watch the skies. Let's see how this goes. It's a bit laggy, so the reason why I haven't really played this before is because it takes forever to load. Uh, and also the latency is quite high. So I'm currently running around 180 things. So it's it's not ideal. But I mean, we're already getting like 110-ish frames there. I have no idea which guns are good. So this one doesn't have a lot of ammo. This one has a bit more, so let's want to go for that. All right, so somebody was here. All right, got one. Kind of stole that kill there a bit, but I don't care. Where is everybody? Anybody else around here? All right, somebody just went inside there. I'm going to play that. This you root. No! Uh, it's bull. Alright, so now cool log. Let's let's see if I survive. But as we can see, I'm getting around like 100, just above 100 frames there. 110. Fight your way out of this or capture the objective. Ah, that's so bull. Back to base with you. Alright, but are we gonna leave it there? Uh, we gotta again run 110 ish frames, so on medium settings and then also with the LSS Ultra Performance. So if you wanted to, you can probably lower some of the settings more to get that 144 hertz. Um, but I think that's mostly what you're going to get with the 3050 here. And again, with our, and of course, again, it was with DLSS on max, on ultra performance. So I think that's the best that you're gonna get. And then another game that I haven't played, actually played in a really long time, is going to be Apex. Uh, I played this like what season the one in season two or this is your even know what it is now. So it's been a really, really long time. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. But just wanted to get an idea of how the GPU or uh, the system performs. So maps look entirely different. I remember the last time I played was like the first first map so yeah it's it's been some time <laughs> but we can just quickly see our settings so everything is 
but more pretty much on high. So we're getting around like 80 frames here. Not too bad. Uh, boy. All right, let's go over there. See how it goes. All right, latency looks really bad. So I'm playing on London servers, playing in South Africa, and it's so like what 180 ping as well. Before anybody's shooting at me, so we're getting around like 100 frames a second. Not too bad, I would say. I remember the Mastiff was like an ultra weapon, wasn't it? No, it's just like a normal weapon. No, can't be no. Oh, 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 oh. All right. All right, so I'm going over here. All right, somebody's here. Hehehe, <laughs> I got them. Half the squad's gone. Time to smoke them. I'm definitely playing like a pansy. But I don't care. <laughs> I want to survive. <laughs> Probably duck down a bit. No! Damn it! I should have switched. But I mean, okay, that's that's fine. Let's go this way. Didn't do too bad. Got three kills. So, all right. So we got around like an average of 119-ish frames there. So definitely good enough. And if you wanted to lower some of the settings, you can to enable a bit a better performance. Of course, you can turn off anti-aliasing a bit. Um, drop it down to around like medium or low and then you'll definitely get to that 144 hertz but <laughs> all right so all right not too bad i think for my first time playing of like in a really long time so next up all right so for our next game we're gonna try out some control and see how it performs with dlss and also ray tracing so a bit more demanding a game graphics wise um, so far, our settings is pretty much everything on low, but with ray tracing on. So I think we can drop ray tracing to medium, see how it performs on everything low, and then we'll enable DLSS. So, currently, round like. Gonna just fight the guys first. Just below like 60 frames here. You can't let this happen. I know. They're still around like 50 frames. Right, so we're still getting around like 50 to around 60 frames. I think we can enable DLSS here because everything is on low. I mean, you can disable ray tracing, which will give us <laughs> a lot more performance. <laughs> this is pretty crazy. So just a medium ray tracing. Yeah, losing more than a half of a frame so you can choose either ray tracing on or off and then if it's off you can of course adjust some of your settings here put it to everything like medium motion off please and then we're getting around like 70 ish frames on a medium with dlss off and also ray tracing off so let's quickly enable our ray trace our DLSS here. So it's going to render a 720p image to 1080p. And now we're getting to that 100 ish frames. Says 
the dead man. Okay. But I mean, if you really want to, you can also now, with DLSS enabled, you can enable ray tracing. Let's leave it on medium because ray tracing in this game looks so good. But if it affects performance too much, then of course, I don't want to disable it. But we're getting around like 70 frames, which is still good enough. It's, this game isn't as fast paced, so you don't need to play it at 144 hertz. I'd rather have a better looking game than like super high refresh right here. And then of course you still get all of your ray tracing effects. So if we quickly turn off ray tracing, you can see off the glow here of the lights, which honestly just looks stunning. It's something that you don't always notice. Well, like it's something that you kind of don't always notice, but if it's not there, it kind of looks a bit dull, as you guys can see. Definitely looks a bit dull right now, but enabling it, but when enabling it, let's go to high. That honestly looks so good. Also with the reflections inside the, the uh, glass here. That's so nice. Which you can work here, you can see yourself. It's honestly so stunning. And I mean, if we do enable DLSS and then also ray tracing on high and everything on medium, we are getting around like 60 frames, just above 60 frames. So that's in this area. Now, of course, some areas will be different, but average here around 60. Not, not bad, I will say. Definitely, definitely, definitely playable. So definitely playable. My bad. Now it is kind of sad that the 350s are so expensive because I think they would have been a really good budget car but because they're so expensive it's it's honestly a bit much but I mean you are able to play pretty much everything uh, we got around depending on the settings we were getting between like a 60 to over 100 frames and in 1080p of course um, and if you wanted to, you can lower more of the settings and then in some of the games, you'll be able to play at 144 hertz if you have a 144 hertz monitor. You, luckily, they're getting cheaper. Uh, I've got, I've done a ASUS, the VG24 VQ, I believe, which is a pretty budget entry-level 1440p, uh, which is a nice budget uh, 144 hertz monitor that you can definitely check out. But I mean, so far, it looked pretty good. The temperatures, again, was a bit high just because of being so damn hot inside here. And performance was good. System looks nice as well. I'm definitely gonna get some B-roll and just show you guys a bit more. But the only thing that I would do, again, is to add some more RGB or just some lighting and besides some white lighting, I think that'll look really good. And it be in a colder room so it doesn't get that hot. But so far it looks really stunning and maybe if you wanted to you can also get a vertical mount for the case and then vertical mount the uh rg streaks here because the new streaks cards looks looks beautiful really but other than that but other than that again the only thing but other than that again the only thing that i would not necessarily but other than that looked a pretty good and once the gpu prices starts to fall a bit you can of course upgrade your gpu again because your entire system is ready for a stronger gpu like like the 370 370 ti or so on but now that is a pretty much it i do hope you guys enjoyed it it was my first build and this type of build in a really a really long time so I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, and comment like always. If you have any recommendations for a different build you want me to do, I'll let me know down in the comments below. Big thanks to Asus South, South Africa sending over the GPU and then also the motherboard and the RAM. Big thanks to Corsair for supplying the um, uh, Big thanks to Corsair for also supplying the AIO, Glowmaster for the uh, for the power supply, and uh, Cougar for the case. So um, they. They did supply a lot of stuff earlier on. I'm just using it for this build now. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I do hope you enjoyed it, and I will check all of you next time. Cheers, guys.